Hello Fight Fans, George Hansen the Mouthpiece. I'm here at the Marin Anderson Recreation Center in South Philadelphia with Charles Cornbread Ramey, the architect, the trainer, the genius behind Hammer and Hank Lundy, who will be fighting WBO Junior Welterweight Champion, Terrence Bud Crawford, on February 27th on HBO in Madison Square Garden. Mr. Ramey, yes, yes. talk to me about the Hammer and Crawford. Uh, Crawford? Yes. Oh, hey. It's nothing bad I can say about him. You understand? I have much respect for him. You understand? He's very good, but as I say, he's not great. Right. Okay? And what I'm saying is, my fighter, I feel, can dispose him. It's a style beats fight. Right. And I have watched him, and basically all his opponent possesses the same style. Okay. And what I look to bring is a different style that they haven't seen, and I think it's going to be more or less like a cat and a mouse mm -hmm. fight. Who the cry is there? The bottom line is who's going to be the cat? Who's going to be the mouse? Okay. I, think I have the opponent to be the cat and be successful and win uh, the Junior World Weight WBO Championship in this fight. Doesn't matter who's the cat or the mouse because rumor has it that you once trained an undersized mouse to be the cat. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Most true. I've been the mouse in so many of them. Mm -hmm. I stand even going back with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let people know you was a great writer yourself. You know what I'm saying? Back in the amateurs. And you know for yourself, so many times, you was an underdog. What did they ask me a couple of times? I'm going to put my kid in there with this certain guy. I put him in there and mm -hmm. you come out victorious, right? Well, I have to say, and maybe I'm biased, one of the competitive advantage the hammer has beside the speed, hand and foot speed, yes. he has you in his corner. You've been around a million years. Yes. You've trained a lot of really great fighters. Yes. And you seem to see things before they happen. Yes, yes, yes. Because like I say, with Hank, it's a thing, he's, he's gifted. First of all, he's mm -hmm. gifted with exceptional speed of hand and feet, but the whole body thing is putting all these things right. together and making them work for you. And that's what I'm intending on doing in this fight, mm -hmm. is to make all these things work for him and all setting all the things that Crawford do so great. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So that's the plan in the fight. That, that's the plan to fight. I've seen you brought different spawn partners in. Yeah. Esau of Kenda, yes. which did a, who did a great job yesterday. Did a, Terrence Crawford impersonation. He did an excellent job, excellent job, and I'm looking for to work with him more. He was mm -hmm. there, flying pressure, doing a lot of things as Crawford do. So that's why I say I want that kind of look. All that good hard work, you know, making you think, making you do things that you haven't did before. You know, a lot of times when you don't do something, as we say, if you don't use it, you, you lose. That's it. true. Okay, and this kid, that's what he do. He makes you be on point. Mm -hmm. man, you know. And so it's a good, good, good smile, bro. And, and I must say, Kenda is about the same size as Crawford. Oh, yes, maybe even a little bigger. Yeah. With long, exceptional arms, good power, good boxing skills. You understand? You know, you, you can actually know better smile mm -hmm. than this guy. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. And you brought back Dangerous Dow Jones, another one of your fighters. Yes. We call him the Floyd Mayweather, Marin Anderson. Yes. He can do it all. I've seen him in there with Hank. Yes, yes. Like you say, his record, what is he, uh, as you say, 6 and 0. Oh, his record don't show, you understand, or, or, or a lot of them is a fight. But as Ali used to say, you understand, the record don't beat you, the man beat you. Right. And so, with, matter of fact, that was one of the number one guys that Hank wanted. Right. Was dangerous down because he knew what he brings to the table and what he possesses. Although he only had six fights on his belt, mm -hmm. he could get in there with anyone with 20, 25 mm -hmm. fights. And I feel he would be victorious over them. So he's another excellent, very excellent, good spine partner for uh, Hank. And you've had, you've brought in Jeremy Quavis. I've yeah. seen Hank working with him, yeah. another really yeah. good southpaw. Yes, yes, very good yeah, young uh, 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 amateur. Yeah, good southpaw. And I feel, uh, as to say, if not today, tomorrow, he definitely will be making noise in the pro ring. You know, very good. I'm just strong, throw a lot of punches, a lot of heart. It's really, really, really good, really good, really good. And those are million punches. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know your phone, since this fight was announced, your, your phone has been ringing off the hook. Yes. People are calling to congratulate you. Yes. But I know to you it doesn't mean much mm -hmm. unless you walk out that ring yes. victorious. Yes, yes, okay. Well, you know, opportunity is only as good as you capitalize on it, how good you make it, you know. But yes, I'm great. 
very grateful to him to get this opportunity. But am I running around jumping around? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. Okay, come the night of the 27th, when London, you understand, you get that win, you understand, beat him, unite me, or stop him, then it'll all kick in. Yes, you understand. And I feel, George, that I'm overdue mm -hmm. for a big upset. You know, you can relate to it. Uh, the bag on the wall over there, Willie Gibbs. Willie Gibbs, well, the gladiator. Was, yes, he was a very heavy underdog, just like Hank is now. I love being the underdog mm -hmm. because you don't put that much pressure on my opinion. Mm -hmm. Crawford is the one got all the pressure on him mm -hmm. because he feel he got the win. He also got to look good within the win. Mm -hmm. And when things start getting a little bad and looking ugly, it puts more, more pressure on him. Mm -hmm. Where everyone is looking at him as underdog. But it's, you know, who make who makes it right make you underdog? Another human being like you and I. You're right. You're absolutely so, right. Okay, so that's why I look at it, you understand? It's man. You understand that uh claim what oh well you don't stand a chance of uh, it's in there you understand you know so that's where I look at it. I love it, the part of playing the under, underdog. But do you realize even in social media you guys aren't a huge underdog? The, the the comments they're split down the line saying it's a chess match like you say cat and mouse. Mm -hmm. Lundy has some advantages, Crawford mm -hmm. has some advantages. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. but I, I like your mindset mm -hmm. going in to mm -hmm. the garden, believing your and on the dog, right? Yes, 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 yes. I, I, I like that rule. I like that rule. Because if you are the big overwhelming favorite, right. that put more pressure on you. You know, like Crawford, what is he? Number three or four in the world? He have a lot of pressure on him because he wants to stand and see. He don't only want to win. He want to look great in his win. Just saying, oh, if he would win and look bad in the win, that hurt his mouth. So he have a lot of pressure on him, you know, where we don't. Right. And we just gonna go in there and do what we do, and I feel we doing what we do. Hey, we gonna come out with the win. And right. and you're right. Um, maybe the pressure is on Crawford. The lowest he's been ranked pound for pound is number five. Mm -hmm. He's high even on boxing three nine six. We have him at number four. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people. The accolades are there, and it's rightfully deserved. Yes, 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 yes. Like I say, I, I reassure you again, you understand? I'm not bad mouth from Crawford, you understand? I like him very lot. But now, you understand, coming June, uh, February the 27th, you know, I don't like him no more. Right. <laughs> okay. I don't like him no mm -hmm. more, you understand? Because he has something that we want, mm -hmm. okay? We can talk, whatever, you understand, before, like the great Alexis. What he'd do? He'd show you much love before the fight, but inside that fight, what he'd do? Knock you out. Knock you out, and what he'd do after the fight? Hug you and love Pick you, you up. Pick you up. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's what the man that I'm in, you understand? Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to come in, all oh, Crawford, ain't nothing, and blah, 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 blah. That's not, that's not me. I'm going to give respect to what he's doing. I think he's a good fighter, but I say I don't believe he's just a great fighter yet. And do I see flaws that I feel my fighter can capitalize on? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, like we say. He's no Sugar Ray Lennox. He's no Tommy Hearn. Mm -hmm. He's no Roberto Duran. Okay? I see probably that uh, that can be exposed, and that's what I intend on doing come February the 27th. Expose these flaws and bring it out of and come away with the win. Mm -hmm. Because I, I feel I'm overdue. It's been a little while since I pulled off the big upset. That's true. Yeah. Well, three people I've, I've never betted against. Um, Floyd Mayweather, mm -hmm. Usain Bolt, mm -hmm. Charles Ramey. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Hey, I'm going to start a fan base and make you my number one fan. Okay. Yes, but I, I really like that because, like I say, in most fights that uh, I've had and where I'm the underdog, I'll come out uh, with the win. You know, like I say, you know, like I, I know what it takes to win. You understand? You know, but I can't do it. Right. You understand? It got to be fed into my fighter and he have to go out there and do it. It's it's like a jockey on a horse. Thank you, thank you. It, yes. the, the the horse has to follow yes. the jockey, and I've seen him. right. Yeah, he have to follow his lead when the guy's touching him with the with the harness or touching him on the side with the, with the uh, boot and everything. It's all different little things. People don't realize how how pet and you know that is horse in horse racing. Mm -hmm. So definitely, with a fight of this magnitude, you understand it's really so a lot. A lot gonna go into it, man. and Crawford, you know, he's not, he's not saving. He's yapping, yapping, but trust me, he's not 
sleeping and thinking ain't, ain't nothing. No, no, nobody sleeps in a hammer. But I think the horse racing analogy is appropriate because a lot of people, I've seen, I'm a horse racing fan. Okay. I've seen races that have been lost because the jockey broke the horse too quickly, too quickly. instead of holding back Hold and letting him back. get to a certain yes. part of the race. In a race, you have to run it in steps, yes. Yes. in stages. Yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. It's very prestigious of how you control holding back, you know, through, uh, you know, as they're going around, you understand? And so that's the same thing in a fight, you understand? You know, tell them when they pick it up, when they pull back, when they do a little mixing, you understand, when they make them, a little faint, make a, make a mistake, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's, like I said before, it's going to be a very, very high profile, you know, strategic fight, you know what I'm saying? Cat and mouth, and it's who to follow that game plan and stay mentally strong. That's who I feel will come out be victorious February the 27th. Okay, um, a, a, which jockey do you consider yourself? Uh, mm -hmm. Steve Cawthons or uh, Calvin Moore? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Granted, we, we look back at your track record, yes. and every fighter you've trained, I've seen trainers, I, I call them cookie cutter trainers, mm -hmm. all the fighters look like they came off an assembly line. Mm -hmm. Every fighter that you've ever trained mm -hmm. is so distinct. Mm -hmm. No two fight alike. Yeah. Why is that? Because no one is alike, you understand? What works for you might be, that's the matter to the other guy. You got to feed off what you see in the individual, you know, and just try to horn on that. Right. You know, so many people, that's why I go back to say, with Muhammad Ali, back, everybody wants to emulate Muhammad Ali. Right. So many people knocked out. That's remember. Next one was what? Tommy Hearns. Everybody wants to have the left hand hanging down by the knee. Right. You have to identify with yourself and what works for you. And go on and make that effective, you understand? Be yourself, whoever it might be. Work in your own style. Don't try to do game be. You can always, you know, watch films and take a little bit from them and a little bit from that. But put that all together, you understand, and make it you, you understand, you know, and everything. And then at the end, like I say, like a Floyd Mayweather. So many guys I've seen coming in and trying to be Floyd Mayweather, rolling the show, and guys just time him and, and clock him. But that's one thing I'll say about uh, London. You understand? He fights his own fight. He don't try to imitate Floyd Mayweather right. or Tommy Hearns. And, you know, he got his own little unique style. And I'm not trying to take, never try to take anything away from him. You understand? All I'm trying to do is just add little things on it and make him be more better in what he's doing. Mm -hmm. you know? That's the way, that's way it was. Because once again, I got to bring it back to you. Back in amateurs, remember, guys used to tell me, oh man, why you let him fight that style with him? Why? Because he was winning with it. Right. So that's true. What's the bottom line? If it's not broke, don't try to fix it. You know? So that's what I'm doing uh, with uh, Lundy. You understand? Basically, you're going to be the same guy, but it's going to be little different things. It'll be done a little different. But what I add on to a thing, you know? You brought Lundy, Hank, Hank Lundy, to Hank. Jimmy Birchfield. Yes. You guys are still together. Yes. Talk to me about the relationship you, Jimmy, and Hank. You guys seem to really work well together. Right, right. Well, I met uh, first. Uh, I met Jimmy with uh, another fighter of mine, Phyllis Amangus McCann. Right. Uh, okay, and uh, Jimmy was working with him. Matter of fact, he had the uh, fastest knockout at, uh, uh, at the Borgata. The right. Yeah, another second knockout. Jimmy okay, was showing him much love, but he fell off the front right. of the scene for two or three years. And so next I took him was London. Right. So he told me, Charles, where you know, I said, Jimmy, look, please. You know, leave I me mean, give this kid a chance, you understand? So we did. We went to uh, 13 and 0. All the time, we were saying, we're going to make Lundy a champ. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what him and I were saying. But Lundy and I, we had our little different, right. uh, separate ways. Okay? And I will be truthful, you understand, about Lundy. If I had a accepted the terms that he was giving me, we would have been back together maybe three or four years. Right, right. Because he, you know, he kept sending people to me. Right. I don't want nobody to come to me. Mm -hmm. You understand? You know, like, you just like next to me, like my son. Right. So why I need somebody, you know, mm -hmm. in between to me that he was coming. So he finally got the message and he come talk to me and we sit down, you understand? Because what it is, you understand, we'll talk. Right. And if we can work it out, or well and good, if we can't, we're going to still go on, hey, hey, we, we all right, and I'm going to wish you well. And so he'll come back and so he said, Coach, can we do it? And so what I did, I asked when I talked to Jimmy, he told me he was glad, glad to right. have me back on board. He said, because all them other uh, 
prima donnas and trainers. He said, nobody cared anything about him, child. Mm -hmm. You the one care about this kid. And I said, well, Jimmy, can we pick up where we left off? Mm -hmm. Can we make this kid a world champion? He said, Charles, we're going to do it. And I must say, two fights, third fight, Jimmy. You guys are there. A world championship fight. So can you ask for anything better? Can't say much. He said he said he was going to make him a champ yes. when he came to Philadelphia. Yes, 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 yes. What would this mean to South Philadelphia and Philadelphia for you and Lundy, both sons of South Philadelphia, mm. to bring another championship mm. to South Philadelphia mm. and to Philadelphia? Mm. And it would mean, I know it would mean everything to Lundy because he works hard and diligent. He's been mm -hmm. at it. And since I had him, what is that? Eight, nine years ago. Oh my God, you guys started in 2001, 2002. Oh, okay. Right. So when he first walked about, in here. Yeah, so what you're talking about, 13 years? Yeah. And this 14. guy haven't backed up, pulled back any from working hard right. at this here. So that would put the explanation on his whole career that hard work and dedication do pay off. And I feel I'm a strong believer of the Almighty. I feel we was brought back together. For reason. reason. Mm -hmm. Right. You understand? And I think come February the 27th, everybody would know why we was brought back together. Because that would climax and highlight both him and me of what we had set out to do from the beginning, become a world champion. Okay. Well, okay. thank you very much. Thank you. Right. There you have it, Fight Fans. South Philadelphia's favorite son, Charles Cornbread Ramey, one of the best trainers in the galaxy. Tune in. On February 27th, HBO, Hammer and Hank Lundy versus Terrence Bud Crawford. Philadelphia versus Omaha. You don't want to miss it. Continue to watch Boxing 396. Boxing 365 days, seven days a week, 24 hours per day. We never sleep. Thank you for watching and tune in on February 27th. Thank